So here I've set up a very simple animation of a cube and a torus rotating, and I have these set up as some uh, very bold colors. What I'm going to do with this scene is I'm going to showcase the grease pencil in action with it. Hopefully you're very familiar with the grease pencil already, but this should be a very quick and easy way to activate it for your own work. Notably though, you need to be careful with using the grease pencil uh, on some of your very heavy scenes, as what you'll run into is potential crashes or incompatibilities. You just need to be really careful when you activate the grease pencil on a very complex object. It's quite similar to a Make 2D in Rhino, where if you're asking it to do a lot every frame, it's going to take a while for every frame. Just keep that in mind as you're activating this, and the, and the freestyle actually. But what we'll do is we'll do it here on a simpler scene, and then in the next couple videos I'll be talking about how to separate your scenes out for uh, ease of use, and then you can combine them again later in render passes. What we'll do to start with a grease pencil is we'll just add a grease pencil object. Of course you can come up here to the top left and add it, or we can just add it to the scene by pressing Shift A, grease pencil, and what I'm actually going to add is a stroke. Of course you can add an object line art directly to the object that we're uh, using, but I'm going to add a stroke, and this stroke will now serve as the master line controller for our entire scene. And I'm just going to pull it out of the camera so it won't be rendered in view. But what we can do with that stroke is add a modifier. And the modifier we're going to add is a line art modifier. You'll notice there are a number of other types of modifiers, which I encourage you to play around with for sure. Uh, but the line art will give us the simplest and one of the most useful functions. I'm going to change it from source type to we'll say object. So that will allow me to have custom line work for each individual object. Of course, if I want to separate things into independent collections, we could run it by collection as well. But for this one, this modifier, I'm going to run it on the cube, and I'm going to put it as lines, and let's pick a... So we have red, white, and black in this scene. For the cube, I'll pick a black outline. And we can already see that in action, and it's quite thin, and the bloom that's in the scene is also obscuring it quite a lot. So we may end up wanting to increase that line thickness. And when we do that, now it's much more obvious. If we hit play, you'll notice that the line work is consistent, and it's redrawing it frame by frame for us on the object. So that's really great for doing animation work. And if you want, you can control several of the features in the settings. So there are a number of different pieces that you can have it working from, and I encourage you to play around with a few of these. Now, you'll notice this is a long list, and not all of them are going to be as useful as others. Uh, notably, if you have really complex line work, uh, you may want to bake the line work, which will freeze it in place so it's not redrawing it. Uh, but most importantly, actually, we'll come in as we add our second line art modifier. This one is applied only for the cube. And if we want, for example, to have our torus also have a line art, what we can do is on that same stroke is add another line art modifier. And I'm going to add another object. I'll pick the torus, pick lines, and for this one, I'll make it blue. And now you can start to see what's really interesting about this tool is that we can completely line draw our 3D scene. Now, the edge types is really where the most extreme influence comes in. If we increase our contour to 180 degrees, it will draw every surface on the object, which can be good. Maybe that's a little excessive for what you're doing. If this is a very smooth object, obviously the polygon count would get ridiculous, which actually what I'll do is I will turn the grease pencil off in the viewport so that this doesn't overwhelm the system, and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier, and we'll apply that. Now if we turn on the grease pencil, you'll notice this is a very dense mesh, and the only way that you could make this really uh, okay would be to drastically decrease that line thickness, which is fine, and would look pretty interesting in its own right. It's starting to look very much like a technical drawing, and interestingly you'll notice that it also happens to be a very similar resolution to our shadow lines. That could be a good thing for you. But in the settings, uh, if we just decrease this crease number to something like 160, we will have very few of the lines actually visible. So it's just lightly catching the outline. So maybe we actually want to bump this line thickness up quite a lot. So it's just emphasizing that smooth curve of the outline. But either way, uh, the important thing is that you play around with it a little and you adapt it to your object. And additionally to adjusting the lines here, uh, you can of course adjust them with other modifiers like dot dash. You can also come into uh, the Grease Pencil Object Data Properties, and you can uh, increase their resolution, you can increase a number of their features, including the material. If you jump down here into the material, you can customize their colors. Uh, so of course you can play around with these settings to your heart's content and adjust the features, 
one feature I will show that is really nice is the noise modifier, which will have your lines jitter quite a lot. So if we now hit play, you'll notice that our lines are jittering. And this will become much more extreme if I increase their line weight. So we'll make it very thick blue lines there. And you'll be able to see them jittering. You, of course, can make these very extreme and make it super sketchy if you want and pair these with some of the other shaders and tune outlines that you might be working with. So freestyle, uh, you, what you need to do to activate it is hop into your render settings, which is the first TV icon here, and you're going to activate the freestyle tab. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to change it here to relative, and I'm just going to reset my settings like the other video. When that is activated, nothing has changed. And the reason nothing has changed is because we have to jump down into our render properties, so our view layer properties. And when you hop into it, you'll find a checkbox for freestyle. And you'll need to activate that. But once it is activated, and we set up a camera, and with this activated, I'm going to add a light. We can see the render preview. And before I hit the render button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a freestyle line set. And you, I have a few of these line sets in the file. This is line set number five. And if I start scrolling down, you'll notice a bunch of settings. So this is where you can control the lines, very similar to even Illustrator or InDesign. So what I'm going to come down here and do is for line style five, I'm going to change the base color to white. And I'll change the thickness to one. And here you can see where the thickness is starting. And you'll also notice you can add modifiers to these, which will make your lines animated or shaky or otherwise. So I'm actually going to hit render, and voila, we've added some white lines to our render. Now this is not happening live in the viewport, unfortunately, and the only way to preview this mode is through rendering. You can activate render passes and render this as a render pass, uh, but you won't have to do that. You may want to later on as we get into the compositing system, but in general, uh, you can just activate it as we just did, and you'll be good to go. Now, of course, you can come in, make your lines dashed, you can make them split, and if you notice, uh, you can add textures to your lines. One thing we might do is just take a look really quickly at some of these uh, modifiers. For example, the thickness, if we add a noise modifier and we animate this, very similar to what we'll see in the grease pencil, it will start shaking your lines around as if they are drawn frame by frame. Now, like I mentioned before, you have to be very careful with this. I actually had problems where I was running this on the master scene file where it would just crash or it would fail to render whenever I was trying to render out the entire scene. 